Today I'm nervous. I don't usually get nervous, but I'm nervous because because this topic is so much bigger than me and it's so much bigger than any other YouTuber that says to you stay strong, I believe in you, you can do it it's so much bigger than just someone on a screen telling you to hold on it's self-harming is a toxic addictive extremely damaging monster actually and um, you know I figured I would start this video sorry this isn't gonna be like a coherent linear video this is just I want to start with um the, the pamphlet that came with my anxiety medication. I just want to read a little bit to you. If you have thoughts of harming or killing yourself at any time, contact your doctor or go to a hospital straight away. If you have thoughts of self-harming, it should be treated as a medical emergency. But it's not, is it? It's not treated as a medical emergency. It's treated as a way of getting attention from people. It's treated as something silly that you'll get over in a couple of years. Don't worry about it. Just stop showing me your cuts. It's weird. And you know, over the last two years since I've been doing YouTube, I have been asked by so many people to make a video on self-harm, that I'm surprised that it's still a taboo subject at all. Because there are so many people who self-harm. Like, when I was like 13 or 14, and I, I was your age, and I don't mean to be talking down to you, sorry if you're not 13 or 14, when I was that age, like, it, it wasn't common at all, really. There were like two or three people in our year at school who did it, that, that I knew of. But now I, I see it on Twitter like every day and just Tumblr every day. It's still treated as something that should be swept under the rug and I, I don't get it. Because whether someone sees self-harming as attention-seeking or not, that person, whether they are attention-seeking or not, is taking something sharp and dragging it across their skin and cutting open their flesh. And that's not normal behaviour. That's not what humans are supposed to do. It should be treated as a mental disorder or a symptom of a mental illness, but it's not. And I didn't mean to start getting frustrated. This is supposed to be a video on perhaps how to start the journey of stopping self-harming. So I'm sorry for that. It just bugs me the way that society still treats this. Anyway, um, anyway. so be before I properly start talking about you know, how to stop self-harming. This is... Like, I'm in disbelief I have to make this video. Like, it shouldn't be a thing, should it? Anyway, before I start, I, I want to say, like, this probably isn't going to be a video like other YouTubers may do. Like, it'll get better. I believe in you. I mean, I wrote a song called The Promise, which is all about the fact that I do believe that you can get better and that you are better than self-harming. But... I wanted this video to be kind of truthful. You know, my dad stopped smoking in 2002, so 12 years. He, he, he stopped cold turkey, like he just willpower, not gonna smoke anymore, and he did it. To, to this day, like he hasn't had another cigarette, but he, he said to me recently, there are still days 
where I could just have a cigarette. Twelve years on. And he could still just jump straight back into that addiction. And self-harming is an addiction. It becomes addictive. Your brain becomes addicted to the chemicals that are released when you do it. It's not normal for the brain to release things like dopamine and serotonin when you cut your own skin. It's not normal and it's treated like it's something disgusting. Sorry, I'm ranting again, aren't I? I just... I mentioned that smoking thing because when you when you stop self-harming, say that you get to seven days, then ten days, then two weeks, then three weeks, then four weeks, then two months. Self-harming is always, for a long time, going to be the thing that you go to when things get hard again. Because your brain is going to remember how you felt when you self-harmed. If someone upsets you, the first thing you're going to want to do is start self-harming again. It could take years to, to get rid of those thoughts, even if they even go completely at all. I mean, my dad still thinks about cigarettes 12 years on, so I, I know they're slightly different, but... Don't expect results immediately, and if you relapse... You're not a failure. It's not you failing anybody. It's, it's an addiction, and addictions have been known throughout time. I guess, I guess my point was just don't, you know, it, it's slow and steady steps, and if you feel like going back to self-harming, I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying it's not your fault. So, oh, this is going to be a really long video, isn't it? Um, there are a few things that you can do to help you start to recover from self-harming, the addiction of self-harming. When you have an urge to cut or burn or pull out your hair or hit your head against a wall, because self-harming is not just cutting. If you get frustrated and smack yourself in the face, that is self-harming. There are different types of self-harming. So anyone that says, oh, well, that's just a tiny little scratch, that's nothing. Those people are toxic. When you, when you want to cut, one of the things that you can do is... If you are at home, go up to your bedroom, if you're not already in your bedroom, lay on your bed and close your eyes, lay on your back, close your eyes, and imagine that your body is weighed down by like a ton of heavy rocks. Imagine that you have been trapped under a ton of rocks. Your body is heavy and you can't move. Stay there. Focus on breathing in and out and in and out. You are stuck under these rocks and you can't move. So close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and out. Until you stop crying. Until you become a little bit more rational. Because when you are upset you will be irrational and you will think of irrational things. Wait for yourself to just calm down. There are another, there are some more things that you can do. Um, there are alternatives which you may have heard of already, such as holding an ice cube in your hand. Because that hurts. That, that really does hurt. If it's freezing cold and you just hold it against the inner palm. I mean, I mean cold burns hurt, but they, they're not, you know, cutting open your skin. So there's that. If you can't, f if you can't do that, if you feel like that's no substitute for pain or the way you felt, there is another technique that our school taught us. I don't know how good it is. <laughs> I say school taught us. There was like one brochure 
hidden at the back of like the nurse's office that no one could see, you know, because that's how well known self-harming is to schools and ugh. rubber bands is what I meant to say. Sorry, get a rubber band and just pull the rubber band and snap it. Now, it shouldn't break your skin. It will hurt, but it, it won't break your skin. And right now I'm just trying to focus on methods that aren't to do with wound inflicting. Um, so I don't, really, I don't really know how good that one is. There's the alternative of cutting paper. If you fold paper up like once, twice, three times, four times until it's thick and it's hard to cut through and you just focus on cutting that piece of paper that tension you're putting in your hand can help just until you're thinking rationally again I'm trying to think of other methods that I know and it's something that I haven't thought about really I guess I kind of just jumped into this video because I thought I don't know thought I could try and help but maybe I'm not the best person to be giving help on something like this which brings me to another point completely you gotta tell someone and that's not what you want to hear right now is it you don't want to hear oh oh tell a doctor you don't want to hear that I'm not stupid if I turn around and said hey you must tell your parents you're probably either going to feel sick in your stomach at the thought of it or you're going to laugh at the screen You will probably be afraid that your parents will be disappointed in you or will get angry and defensive because perhaps they think it's their fault. That's, that's a common reaction. I'm not going to lie. Parents think that they've done something wrong. I don't know your story. Maybe your parents are the reason you're doing it. I don't know you, sadly. But there are people that you can tell really they really are like you think it's impossible it's not sorry my thing stopped recording um if you're at school if your school has a school counselor or a nurse before telling them your problem ask is this strictly confidential and if they say well if it's an emergency and we have to tell your parents and you're not comfortable with that that's fine if they say no it's confidential they're an adult who has been through life and is surrounded by kids and their struggles every day. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you a kid. They will be able to help you. If you feel like they are gonna tell your parents and you're uncomfortable with that, you can actually go to a doctor. Doctors are under an oath to keep things confidential. You can ask them to reaffirm this if you are scared of it. If you are scared that they'll tell your parents, ask them, is this strictly confidential? Do you have to inform anyone? I believe the answer is no. Telling a stranger can be very, very scary. Hello, I'm a 15 year old girl and I self-harm. It's not a sentence you want to say to anybody, is it? It's a tough video to make. I knew this would be tough. The good thing about going to a doctor is self-harming is a common symptom of depression. A doctor will be able to say, you are depressed, try some antidepressants. Now, pills are not for everybody and I don't really want to branch off into depression. This is specifically a self-harm video. Pills aren't for everybody, but I try them. If you're offered a medication that helps with your brain, because remember this is to do with your brain, this is hormones and addiction. If you're offered something that can help, I would say try. Another thing is you can ask your doctor to refer you to, I don't want to call them a psychiatrist because I don't want to you know, imply that you're crazy, to someone that can help you through therapy. This is all confidential. 
there are people out there who understand. The medical world, as you saw in that pamphlet, they understand that self-harming, just thoughts of self-harming is a medical emergency because it is a threat to life. It's a serious thing. It's serious. Just... Keeping things bottled up doesn't make things better. They don't just go away by themselves. I'm sorry to burst a bubble. Sometimes you are able to fight through it with your own willpower. Sometimes you do go through it alone. But when you, when you tell someone that you are feeling low or that you are self-harming, the weight just... Because you said it to somebody. You've said the words physically. If there is someone you can tell, an older brother or sister, a friend, anybody, I'd recommend it. There's a video that my friend Luke made about stopping self-harming where every day for seven days you write cut cake on your wrist. For every day that you don't self-harm, you write another letter. That's to do with our awareness, cut cake not wrists, which was uh, founded by Bri Bri, my friend. There is another method that I just remembered. Um, if you, wherever it is that you cut, whether it's your stomach, your thighs, your arms, again, I, I am aware I'm generalizing to wound inflicting. You can draw a butterfly, just a small butterfly, wherever it is that you cut, draw over your cuts, so long as they are, they, they've scabbed over and you're not putting ink into your skin. It's your challenge from then to not hurt the butterfly. The only problem that I have with this is that you may just be tempted to self-harm on another part of your body. But that's something to think about. There was a girl in my classes who was a close friend. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm going to call her Alice. It's not her real name. Um, when we were 13, like, her family life was so, so bad. Like, her dad walked out, her stepdad treated her like dirt. Her mum didn't want to know and just drank all the time. And she started self-harming. Found out in maths, because I sat next to her. There were just cuts all up her wrist. And she saw me look, and she just quickly pulled that up. And one of my biggest regrets about you know, things I wish I'd done at school... I wish that I had said something. Not, why do you do that? I wish that I had pulled her aside and said, look, I know what you're doing. And if you need someone to talk to, I'm here to be understanding. If you have a friend who self-harms, please just let them know that you're there for them without being judgmental or condescending, whether you know what they're going through or not. Don't treat them like what they're doing is weird because we're just getting to this breakthrough where depression is becoming more known and it's not a weird thing anymore but self-harm is still such a taboo you know i'm going into ranting again if you have a friend who self-harms you will feel like you want to do something to help them you will want to tell their parents you will think about telling their parents but you're worried, is this a good idea? Because what if their parents just get really mad? I would say it's not your place to tell that person's parents. But, then again, it may help. It's a difficult situation and if you know their parents well enough to gauge how they react, then you can make that decision. Otherwise, if again, if again, if there is a school counsellor you can talk to, tell them that your friend is self-harming and ask for their advice. Because I'm not, I'm not a therapist. I, I can't give professional advice on what to do if your friend is harming themselves. And I wish I could. I wish I could sit here and give you all of the answers, but... There is no straightforward answer. I guess I'll end this on a better note, a lighter note. You are worth so much more 
I don't even know you. I don't know your family life. I don't know how many friends you have. I don't know your name. Just as I said in my song, I don't know your story. But no human deserves to feel like that. No human should hate themselves or their body so much that they take it out on themselves. Whatever it is that you're going through, it's temporary. If it's your family that's getting you down, one day you won't be living with them, one day you'll be on your own. If you're quite young and you feel insecure about your body and that's what makes you hate yourself, you're still going through so many changes. I, if, if you had shown like 13 year old me what I look like now, forgetting that I have a shaved head. I wouldn't believe it because I had loads of puffy fat and spots and I never believed that I would look like anyone else, that I'd look like an acceptable human. But I am an acceptable human and I feel good about myself now. I'm happy with myself. And I never would have thought I'd be happy But it's all temporary. Everything is temporary. Life is temporary. All of the stuff you're going through is temporary. It will end. Maybe you have thoughts in your head. Maybe you have really bad memories. Eventually they can fade. Because it's all just temporary. So one more thing. When you are feeling low and you want to self-harm, whatever it is that you do to self-harm, I want you to make a list, and I know it sounds so cheesy, oh, get a pen and paper, but seriously, get a pen and paper and make a list of all the things that you want to do with your life. Some things on my list, um, I want to see the Grand Canyon. I want to take my brother and sister to Disneyland. I want to get married. I want to have two children. I want to go and see Wrestlemania. I want to own a house. I want to have a dog at least once. There's such small things that I want to do. And, and I think if you just had a list and you kept looking back at that list and there's such a bright future for you, for the people you know, for anyone, if they want it. Don't ever believe that your future is bleak. I'm telling you, it's not. I... How would you know what your future is if you packed it in now? Treat yourself with the love that you want and the love that you deserve, which is a lot, you know, I, I'm just always in constant disbelief at how many young boys and girls just hate themselves at such a young age and yeah, I know it's mostly to do with society and bullying and family issues. But this problem is getting bigger. And it's a lot bigger than me. I hope this video was helpful and I hope that it was the start of something for you. I don't know if it was may not be of any help at all. It's just such a hard thing to make a video on and... <sighs> I hope this is the start of something better for you. Something that you deserve. I just want you to know that you're, you're better than this. 
you are worth more than this. And I just accidentally quoted my own song, which makes me feel a little bit weird. But I do believe in you. I've known some pretty, pretty emotionally weak people. People that feel like they've been beaten down a lot. I've seen them come back from a, like really low moments. I've seen them spring back and they found happiness. And there's no reason as to why you can't. Your brain might tell you something different right now, but I wish the future you, I wish you in five, ten years could come into your room right now and sit down and talk with you. That's not me saying that this is a phase. It's not a phase. You just get better and stronger with every day that goes by. For all of the stuff you put up with, it makes you stronger. So you in 10 years, you're a tank, you know? I wish I could go back. And just tell my younger self that I deserve better. I wish I could go back and tell my friend that she deserves better. I hope this helped. I really do. See you soon.